Today we're talking DM tips. Take everything that I say with a grain of salt. It's all a matter of opinion. The first tip I would give you is never make anyone feel small. Your players are interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons because in a fantasy world, they get to be bigger than they are in the real world. Always make your players feel good, like they're making successes, that they're achieving things. In a very short period of time, your player is making these great strides, whether it be through wealth or power, gaining greater equipment. And these strides are by far greater than the type of strides that we make in our real lives. This is the reason why your friends want to play this game with you. The old Dungeons and Dragons modules used to state things like for 9 to 12 players from levels 6 and above. You don't want 12 people at your table. Someone's going to get upstaged by more vocal players. You're going to find your party dwindles rather quickly. Some players aren't going to come back. Limit your group size. Session zeros. If your session zero is going to do anything, it'll be character creation. And I don't have a problem with players already showing up with pre-generated characters insofar as their statistics aren't through the roof. Now, generally what I would look at is an average. Add up all of their statistics and then divide the number by six. And if it's somewhere around 12 and a half, then it probably didn't fudge anything. That's generally where most starting characters begin. I want to talk about fudge and dice rolls. If you're fudging dice rolls because you think that it's going to keep a player alive, then you may have done it incorrectly. I've stated before that there are ways to mitigate a roll on the DM's part that will end up causing a player death. If you find that your players are losing the battle, have the monster run. I'm not going to tell you not to fudge dice rolls. I don't do it myself. I do think that it's dishonest, but that's just my opinion. But the moment your players find out that you are fudging dice rolls, they will never trust another roll you make. To railroad or not to railroad, all game masters are storytellers, and all storytellers are thieves. We steal our inspiration from wherever we find a muse. Well, you remember that it may be your world, it's still their story and you allow them to tell the story. However, when your party is finding a hard time deciding on an action, railroad them. New players almost need to be railroaded. You can be sneaky about it. It's been my experience that most players don't know you're railroading them unless you say the word railroad. These are the old Choose Your Own Adventure books from Dungeons & Dragons Back in the 80s, they made these. When it came time for you to choose your own path, you usually only got two or three options. And two of those options were usually a railroad. The third option was not a happy ending, but the first two were a railroad. They both led to the same place. When you railroad your party, don't let them know you're doing it, and they won't complain. But if you say the word railroad, then they're going to get fussy. How to read your table. Your ability to read your table is very important as a storyteller. If they're stacking their dice up and making towers out of them, probably means they want to roll them. If they're yawning, looking tired, staring at the ceiling, you're losing everybody's interest. Don't panic. The number one cure for this, attack them immediately. Roll for initiative. You throw down with them. You make them roll dice. Trust me, everyone is going to sit up. What? Who are we fighting? What did I miss? Role playing, combat, exploration, dungeon crawl, puzzles, myriad of different facets to the whole role playing game. And if you spend too much time on any one of those facets, your players are going to get bored. So stir it up immediately. Even if it's not part of your plot. Rewarding your players. It's not always necessary to give them treasure. For instance, uh, you could give them a magic item instead. A plus one sword is about as boring as they come, but pff, hey, we like them, right? Permanent stat boost. You now have a uh, plus one to your constitution or plus one to your strength score. 
and this could be granted by like some devil or demon or fae creature, could come from a locket or some other magical bubble. However, when you start handing out magical items, make sure that everyone in the party gets something. Else you run the risk of looking like you're playing favorites and nobody's going to like you then. A horse or a pack mule or pets. Players love that kind of stuff. Everybody wants a pet dragon, right? <laughs> the MacGuffin. If you're running shy on plot, throw in a MacGuffin. A MacGuffin is a, a, an object or an event that the plot hinges upon. It's very important to your players, but in and of itself it doesn't really mean much. Every Harry Potter book was Harry Potter and the MacGuffin. Throw in a MacGuffin in your story. What is the MacGuffin? is introduced in the first act. The second act, all of the characters are searching for said MacGuffin. In the third act, your your players get the MacGuffin, but they're going to spend the majority of the game looking for said MacGuffin, if it's a, an object. If it's an event, then we're just leading up to it, I suppose. Describe your monsters rather than name them. The more proficient dungeon masters are very good at describing things. If you tell your players that a shambling mound just appeared up out of the swamp water, they could metagame it, if they know anything about shambling mounds. Give a sense to everything. A sense of smell. Uh, what do we see? What do we hear? However, if you tell them that this monstrosity growing up out of the swamp water, covered in fungus, leaves and algae and slime, its entire entity seems to be composed of decomposing plant life and new plant growth growing all over itself. What the monster tastes like is not really relevant. At that point, they don't know that they're actually dealing with a, sh a shambling mound. They could be dealing with several other critters listed in the monster manual. Giving descriptions is far better than flat out naming something. There's a level of fear that you've just introduced by not calling it by name. How you play your game is ultimately the best way to play the game. Remember that. I have a Facebook group called uh, Dungeons and & Dragons and & Beer, and you're welcome to join up. Lots of very talented folk in that group. I never met John Cusack. I don't know how to play poker.